Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make Boston Cream Cupcakes. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am sharing a simple recipe for those of you who are fans of Boston Cream Pie. If you've had it before, you know Boston Cream Pie is actually a cake, and today we are turning it into cupcake form. Now the first ingredient, or the first thing you're actually going to need, is a batch of my homemade vanilla pastry cream. I have shared several videos already showing you in depth how to make that pastry cream. So we're not going to be going over that today, but I will link to that recipe in the description so you can watch exactly how I make it at home. I made mine last night to give it plenty of time to chill for today's recipe. So we can go ahead and jump right into making the cupcakes. Now you'll want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and grab a large mixing bowl. We're going to be making a simple, light and springy vanilla cupcake. It's going to be very light and fluffy, but still sturdy enough to hold our cream filling. The first thing you'll need is one stick or one half cup of unsalted butter, and you want this to be softened about to room temperature. We're also going to be adding one half cup of canola or vegetable oil. Really any neutral oil will work for this recipe. I really love using a blend of half oil and half butter in most of my cake recipes because the butter adds a really nice flavor and the oil adds a lot of moisture, which keeps the cake from being too dry like it would be if we were using all butter. Next, we'll be adding one and three fourths cup of granulated sugar. And you'll want to use an electric mixer at this point to beat everything together until it's creamy and really well combined. So I've gotten a few questions about why I use my hand mixer when I have a perfectly good stand mixer behind me. The reason I do it is because I like you to be able to see exactly what the batter looks like and it's just a little harder to get that good camera angle when I'm making everything in my stand mixer. So I'm doing the extra work for you. This recipe calls for four large eggs and ideally they should be at room temperature. We are going to be adding them one at a time and stirring well after each addition. You should always crack your egg in a separate bowl before adding it to your batter. That way, if you get any shell in there or if the egg turns out to be bad, you're not ruining your whole batter. Sometimes I like to just add the egg straight into the batter just to make things a little bit quicker for you. And one time we had a rotten egg and I had to start the whole thing over again. So I try not to do that anymore. And once your eggs are nicely combined, we'll stir in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So you can put your electric mixer away at this point. We are done with it for the rest of the recipe. And I'm just going to briefly scrape the sides of the bowl and the bottom of the bowl with my spatula just to be extra sure that everything is completely combined. Now set that batter aside and in a separate bowl, you are going to want to measure out three cups of all purpose flour. We'll be adding one tablespoon of baking powder and three fourths teaspoon of salt. And you'll just want to use a whisk to stir everything together until it's completely combined. You don't want there to be any lumps in your flour either. So once your dry ingredients are nicely combined, you're going to want to now measure out one and one fourth cups of buttermilk. If you do not have buttermilk, just check out my really simple buttermilk substitute. It's just two ingredients. We're going to alternate adding our dry ingredients that we just whisked together and our buttermilk to our butter batter that we've already prepared. Now do not under any circumstances use an electric mixer for this step. I always like to start with my flour mixture I usually add about a fourth of it and just eyeball it. And we're going to use our spatula to gently fold this into the batter until it is just combined. So once that flour is nicely incorporated, then we will add about a third of our buttermilk. Whenever you're making a cake like this, it's so important that you don't overmix the batter or it's going to end up dense and dry. This is why we are stirring everything together by hand and we're doing so gently. Repeat this process until you have added all of your flour and all of your buttermilk. Today's recipe makes 24 cupcakes, but it can easily be cut in half if you prefer. I recommend lining your muffin tin with paper liners, and we are going to fill each liner about three quarters of the way full. Do not overfill or else your cupcakes will end up caving in, which sounds a little counterintuitive, but trust me, that's what'll happen. I like to use an ice cream scoop to neatly and evenly divide the batter. Now you'll be baking two of these trays because as I said, this recipe makes 24 cupcakes. I do prefer to bake mine one at a time. 
They're going to need to bake for about 17 minutes in our 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. To check that they're done, I like to touch the tops, see that they lightly spring back, and use a toothpick and insert it in the center of one that should come out clean or with a few moist crumbs. It's super important that you let your cupcakes cool completely before you go any further. Once they have cooled, we can go ahead and make our chocolate frosting, which is really kind of just a ganache. Now, in a heat proof bowl, you're going to want to combine a half cup of heavy cream and one cup of chocolate chips. I like to use semi-sweet chocolate chips, but milk chocolate or dark chocolate would work here instead. And I also like to add two tablespoons of light corn syrup, which helps make the chocolate frosting just a little bit fudgier and it gives it a really pretty glossy shine. Now I know some people don't like using corn syrup or don't keep it on hand. First, I wanna say it's not the same thing as high fructose corn syrup. Secondly, I wanna say you can absolutely leave it out if you prefer, the frosting just won't be quite as thick. Once you've combined your ingredients in the bowl, you'll wanna give everything a nice stir. Just make sure it's all nicely combined. And we're going to heat this in the microwave in 25 second increments, stirring really, really well every 25 seconds until the mixture is smooth and completely combined. Once that's nice and melted, I like to also add one third cup of powdered sugar. This also helps just to thicken up that ganache a little bit. Makes it a little bit more frosting-like. Now, to guarantee a smooth chocolate coating, I recommend you sift your powdered sugar before adding it into the chocolate. I skip that step because it's just my family who's going to be eating this, and if they complain about lumpy frosting, then they can just not eat it. But if you're trying to show off or if you're making these for a bake sale, taking the extra minute or two to sift would probably not be a bad idea. I'm going to switch over to a small whisk just to help cool down this ganache a little bit. That way it gets a little bit thicker and that will help break up some of the sugar too. So as you can see, this is actually pretty thin still. As it cools, it's going to firm up a little bit more and you want it to be more of a spreadable consistency, still a little bit liquidy, but definitely thicker than it is now before we put it on our cupcakes. So I'm going to set this aside, let it cool a little bit, and if your cupcakes are completely cool, we can start the assembly process. So we're going to need to core all of our cupcakes. Some people like to use fancy cupcake corers. If you have one, that'll be great. I don't have one, so I'm just going to use a knife. Now I'm going to cut a circle into the top of the cupcake and I want it to be about an inch and a half wide. I'm going to cut it to be about an inch deep. You want it to go a little bit further than the center of the cupcake. I'd say probably about three quarters of the way into the cupcake. And as I carve, you might be able to tell that I'm making the crater a bit more narrow as I go. So it's wider at the top and more narrow at the bottom. Now you don't want to carve all the way down to the liner. You want to still have some cupcake down there at the bottom. So we'll just carefully lift this plug up and I'm just going to slice off the bottom and we'll reserve this top piece right here. Now this cupcake still has a little bit of fluff in the middle, so I'm just going to use my knife to just gently carve that out and just tap it out. Now remember that pastry cream I told you about that I made yesterday? This is where it comes into play. We are going to generously fill this cupcake cavity with pastry cream. Now don't overfill it, but you wanna go just about to the top and then we'll take that little piece of cupcake that we reserved earlier and we will place that right back on top. Plug it back up. Then just repeat with your remaining cupcakes. Now I like my chocolate to be thickened a bit before I drizzle it over my cupcakes. So if you see what I have here, the ribbon that's falling off the spoon is a lot thicker than it was earlier. So this will just keep it from just running right off the top of your cupcake. It's gonna drizzle a little bit on top nudge it over the sides. It might not seem like a lot of frosting, but because it's so rich, a little bit goes a long way. And that is how you make Boston cream pie cupcakes at home. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe, and if you try it out, please let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is gonna be messy. <laughs> so worth it.